inspire you to be a part of the third installment of the Girlfriend Experience? I am so beyond excited um, to be at this point. I mean, it's we've we've come a long way, and I, I think back to the moment when it all started and how how big of an opportunity it was. And then you know, it's even grown in scope since then. It's just been you know a labor of love in the best of ways. Amazing people involved. Um, behind and in front of the camera. And I'm just so excited and proud for everyone to kind of tie a neat bow around it in May 2nd, we can share it with the world. Now you're the, you were involved in the writing, right? But, and you directed this third. Uh, correct, yes. Okay. Well, so we, we have 10 episodes and, you know, all 10 episodes were shot by the same DP, edited by the same editor and I directed all 10. So we, we do have, a, you know, there's a unique ability to create a cohesive tone across the the season much like you know that, that's sort of the I guess previous uh seasons of the girlfriend experience have done that exactly the same way and it's very filmmaker driven and and I you know I came to it being a big fan of the franchise so I was gonna I was gonna go that route uh what was it about the franchise that attracted you to just really get involved being a fan um, I yeah it, it was just this um you know you don't get a phone call from Steven Soderbergh every day. And, you know, in my personal situation, I have my, my whole trajectory as a filmmaker, I was hugely influenced by his work and, and have seen all of his films at least once. You know, I've seen them lie me a dozen times at least uh, in all sorts of states of being. And um, it was just this beautiful window that opened and, and you know, I could bring my own interests to the, to the table. I was working in um, on a lot of, projects at the time that have to do with neuroscience, AI, future facing technology. And it was like, you know, here's, here's the next installment of the, of the girlfriend experience. And obviously we want to bring back audiences who loved uh, the previous seasons created by um, Amy Simons and Lodge Kerrigan. And, you know, they're so unique and special and daring filmmaking. So I wanted to honor that, but then also there was a, a space for me to fill it with my own interests and, and, and like a, bring a different flavor to it. Mm -hmm. And, but for this one, we get to see a little more of the personal side of the, the girlfriend. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yes, I mean, I, I, I'd I love to tell you all about, it. I'm gonna have to um, censor myself ever so slightly because there's there will be spoilers. So um, what I can say is that it was important to me that we would be able to be with Iris in the moment and understand why she's doing what she's doing um, because she does have an end game. She goes into mm -hmm. the girlfriend experience um, part of her life, almost like a spy or a superhero who, who uses that setup to, you know, study human behavior and then shuttle it back over to the tech world where she, you know, by day she works as a neuro researcher for this sort of secretive elusive startup um, AI startup and I you know wanted to carefully reveal what's really driving her across the season so we really get to know her Achilles heel what's driving her and what what her biggest uh, sort of um, biggest uh, battle in life is at this moment in time we will we will follow her down the rabbit hole that's what I like about this story that it actually has like that other intention and purpose for going this route. It's not because of need of money or just the circumstances. It was like on purpose for a reason, for a purpose. Yeah, uh, we, we always said among the producing team and, and network um, executives that the show is really, the franchise is really about free will and determinism. I mean, that sounds a little um, heady perhaps, but it, really is a non-judgmental approach to this area you know, of sex work where it's not about the moral judgment or dissecting what, what brought anyone you know, to, to make that choice necessarily from a, from a moral standpoint, but really to say like, this is what, what a character chooses and now let's look at who this character is and all their sort of 360 dimensionality and, and you know, so I, I just had the best time across 10 episodes to, to peel away the layers of Iris and see what's underneath. And Julia is in every scene. So you'll, you'll get to see 
audiences will get to see um, a lot. How did you know that Julia was the iris? You know, I had seen her work in the affair and just thought it was really um, sort of brave and nuanced in the moment and, and at the same time, hyper smart. And I knew that we would need to cast an iris who could believably pull off the science angle, mm -hmm. you know, like the sort of nerdy scientist who goes in with, with a really specific, I'm a big nerd at heart, so I feel like I'm, I'm spreading the love here, but, um, <laughs> and, and, you know, Julia just nailed it. I mean, we, we had, I was so excited when it became clear that she was going to play the lead and, and then I still had some time to, to tailor the script to who she is as, a, as an actor and that was just really, really fun. If it's okay to share a little bit of the favorite scene, I had a chance to check out a few episodes. What's the dialogue that goes on with, uh, not saying too much, but the baseball fan. Mm -hmm. And she, she, you know, she's carrying this, this, this British accent and he's like being a little judgmental and she goes, she has good comebacks. I mean, I have to compliment on that as a writer. Oh, thank you. I think Toby Bumtefa, who, who plays uh, the character of Brett, who you're referring to, he's a tremendous actor who, you know, I, if our casting director and I, we were like, we're like, like, finding him is like finding the needle in the haystack. And I was this close to actually completely rewriting his character. And then, um, you know, we found Toby and he just brought so much uh, depth and, and fun to the role. A scene you can share that you were really looking forward to shooting? Oh, you know what? So many. I mean, we found the most amazing locations. Our locations team, Gary Pickering, and in London. I mean, we we. I was looking forward to every location just to be there. I mean, we shot the last two days. We shot on the Tate Modern, and just it was just this tremendous feeling of of height and reality. Uh, I, they're all my babies. I don't know how to how to differentiate there. Yeah. Cinematography was great. I did get a chance to speak to Julia yesterday and I mentioned that to tell me about the cinematography because it was fabulous. So you you did you did that was all you. That is all Zachary Geller, the the DOP, and he is a painter with but light. You did direct, so you deserve a lot of that credit. We, yeah, we all collaborate around the campfire. I like I like to, to think of it as all this, you know, energy coming together and then obviously the the like the sum of all parts is bigger. And it, it, that's to me is the magic of, of why I'm doing this job. It's really, gotcha. it, it's very, it's like, it's like sorcery on some level. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time and talking to us about this third installment of the Girlfriend Experience. People are going to be checking out on May 2nd. Thank you so much for watching and for having me. I'm excited for you too. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you and good luck.